diving right in with my stacking point pencil. On the left is a rough pen sketch I'd done earlier in the month. Things were kept pretty simple for this month in review. You may recall I had mentioned grabbing this pencil from a Halloween treat bag a while back. You may even notice that it's not the same one. That's because I have about eight of them. No, there were no kids crying over missing pencils. We overestimated and accidentally ended up with extra treat bags. Which, if pressed, I'll admit, wasn't so accidental. Especially since it happens every Halloween. You may be wondering why I'm talking about this in my May Month in Review. It's because May is the approximate midpoint from our favorite holiday. So our thoughts are beginning to turn hauntful, ghoulish, and downright pumpkin-y. Why can't we just enjoy spring and summer like normal people? Oh, we do. But the anticipation of all things autumnal is so delicious. So be prepared for some early fallish content well before September. I don't often take footage of the sketching part, but figured I'd throw it in this time uh, in case it's helpful. The original drawing could have been worked more into a finished piece and then traced onto watercolor paper, but that didn't seem necessary for this piece. I've realized the hard way that one doesn't necessarily pick up the old drawing skills after years of neglect. Yeah, even after getting back into art, it was all about the painting for me, so more practice with pencil work is called for. This pad of Strathmore watercolor paper was given to me by my best friend, and it's come in handy. She's given me gifts on her birthday, so when I say best, I mean it. I've used this paper in five of the last eight videos, basically when I would have normally reached for my 9x12 pad of Canson XL, I've grabbed this instead. And that's because its surface is slightly more textured, and I like the 11 by 15 inch size, which I can cut down to two 7.5 by 11s. There are other brands of watercolor paper I'd like to try eventually, but for now, Arches, Canson XL, and this Strathmore 300 are keeping me busy. Yay for paper security!
The tubes represent M. Graham paints. The bottle is whipped cream flavored vodka, and the flower palette under the letter A was the last item added since it was the last to arrive. All of those were birthday gifts from my partner. If you're a May baby, you'll know that emerald is the stone associated with this month. I tried to acknowledge that with the green mixes. But since what constitutes the color emerald varies broadly, I'm not sure it works for everyone. Seriously, I googled emerald color and got everything from a pale yellowish green to a bluish turquoise. I did have the bottle there as I worked, as reference, and as a treat at the end. It still feels almost surreal to be painting. I first learned how to draw from family members and later from art books such as Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis, Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham, and Dynamic Figure Drawing by Bern Hogarth. As a teenager, I tried other mediums, but my paintings were terrible. I hate to say it, but those high school art classes were not conducive to learning. They pretty much just handed you a brush and a canvas, said knock yourself out, and left you directionless. At least that was my experience. But I'm talking over 30 years ago, so things may have changed.
Yeah, there's a noticeable lack of spring flowers here. While I enjoy them and have even painted a few, I'm not that good at florals. Besides, May's flower is Lily of the Valley. How is that even a real flower? I mean, it's classified as part of the Asparagaceae family, which I should be more partial to since I do love a good grilled asparagus. More so than Lily of the Valley, carnations are what I associate with May. Probably because it was one of my mother's favorite blooms. But also, I'm fond of them. They are so pretty and fragrant. But with all of those frilly edges, I won't be painting any. I'm glad to have bleed proof white, but even that's not perfect. Maybe some white gouache will be next in my search for the best opaque white. I had some white Signo pens and they worked okay at first, but after only a few pieces, I couldn't get the ink to flow at all. So far, this has worked the best for me.
giving you a nice, long, lingering look at my nail polish. It's Americano, a lovely shimmery shade that's both brown and pink by Clean Color Nail Lacquer. I'm unsure if the name is referencing the delicious espresso beverage or the nationality, but since it would be equally weird if either my coffee or my countrymen were to shimmer, I'm not going to think too hard on it. I'm happy to share this May 2020 Month in Review piece. Here's to a colorful future. Until next time, stay artsy, my friends.